birds are really key to human existence one way or another anywhere in the world When I was growing up in the springtime, when the east wind blows, when the hills start to appear, we smell the tundra. We, we love the, the sound of the birds. My mom tell me the names of the birds and what kind of ground they lay their nets in. Yeah, right there. Every day I would go out gathering gigs from around town. The little ones for the, for the kids. And I have grandkids that uh, love to eat eggs. Since I come home, I'm going to cook them. When I finally realized that the birds always go away for the winter, I had to cry for them. And I wish that I could go with them and come back with them. ¿Qué se siente vivir en un lugar como este? Es perfecto. Pareciera que no tienes mucho, pero en realidad tienes todo. Tienes este, naturaleza, tienes el mar, tienes, tienes todo. OK. Oh, Marvel Goldwitz flying. Yo nací aquí, este, tengo toda mi vida este, aquí en la Chorera. Es un privilegio vivir aquí. O sea, aquí te levantas y escuchas el, el ruido de, de, los, de los pájaros, de diferentes aves, ¿no? When you are shorebird and are flying around this area, you see this place and you see, oh my god, this is heaven, this is an oasis. Una, dos, tres. Y celebramos las aves con la comunidad de La Chorera y con todo el San Quintín. Mi familia ha participado desde el primer festival. Es una, un, una fiesta muy bonita este, que, se, que se organiza aquí en la comunidad. Bueno, el festival es, eh, como dice su nombre, es una celebración, es un festejo para celebrar este, estas aves playeras que son unos verdaderos maratonistas. ¿no? Bahía de San Quintín está localizado en, en el corredor migratorio del Pacífico. Es un sitio de esta cadena de sitios que usan las aves playeras para migrar a lo largo de, de este corredor migratorio. Recibe aves que anidan en el Ártico y Subártico que vienen aquí a invernar. We got some sandpipers. They're all taking advantage of the tide receding and starting to forage. Para las aves playeras eh, migratorias, no, la, las fronteras no existen y su casa es todo el corredor, no es solamente San Quintín. Necesitan de todo el corredor. A lot is not 
understood yet about their movements, where they go, their important stopover sites. With this particular study, that's a key first step to understand where these birds are going and what factors and threats that they're experiencing throughout the annual cycle. Right now, we, we lack that information. And if we're going to conserve the population, we first need to know where they're going. It's two hours out, so let's do a radio. Maybe have one person stationed on either end to move birds, but also a person in the middle. There's lots of different kinds of field work that we do, and I don't think there's anything like what we're doing now in terms of trying to catch a bunch of shorebirds. It's a really incredible challenge. We're not going to be able to do anything unless the tide moves up a lot very quickly. When we're getting close to firing the cannon net, it gets really tense. You can feel the adrenaline. I, I'm sure that my heart rate is 100. 80 beats per minute, I, I, and I know everybody else too, they're feeling the same thing, that same excitement and anticipation and hope that things are going to work out. There's a massive flock in the air over there. Laura, are those all on the point? Yes, thousands of them. Both charged the cannon net. And they're charged. Three, two, one, fire. Okay, everybody, come on, pull back. They're built through evolution to be able to travel thousands and thousands of miles multiple times a year. 3PL was 102. Right. Truly incredible migrations from such small birds is kind of an inspiring feat, and it's kind of hard to wrap your head around the fact that that bird on the beach is also going to be the same bird on the beach in Mexico or in South America or up in Alaska. And diagonal tarsus is 33.1. So last year we did this. We put 20 tags out, and they worked amazingly well. We tracked 17 birds to breeding areas. This is the GPS transmitter. It'll send information to the satellites that we'll then be able to download, and that'll tell us where she's going until it falls off. Because these feathers will eventually grow back in, and then the transmitter just falls off. All right, safe journey. Sounds of the springtime. Our tunnel's alive, our air is alive. All winter long, all we hear is just wind with the snow. Once we start hearing the birds, it's music to our ears. We start feeling more alive. Our ancestors, they chose this area because we have everything here. We have the sea, we have our bay, we have the land, and we have the waterfowl and the shorebirds that come. We've lived like this for thousands of years. In our language, we call man angun, and angun means provider. And a good hunter is called an gospel. And he'll go out bird hunting, he'll catch a lot of birds, bring home. He'll go seal hunting and catch seals and come home. He'll go whale hunting and catch whales and come home. Because uh, he knows where all those animals and fish are. Dad, Mommy and Dad. Mommy. As a child, I started egg hunting with my mother. We'd walk starting about 8 in the morning. We'd be out from 8 a.m. to 8, 9, 10 in the evening, the whole day out looking for eggs. Subsistence still is a big part of our culture here in Hooper Bay. 
Growing up, we knew which way we could and we couldn't go. Before our GPS, it was all in our head, you know. <laughs> we sit down and watch it, and then pretty soon it goes into the nest, and we tell them, see, you just wait, it'll show you where its nest is. I found eggs. <laughs> the small ones. They're enjoying it, and we love it. It's a time of togetherness. That was one of the main things in our culture that we love. It brought all, all families together when we'd have to go and spend a few days out. It would make us closer. It is in our heart, it's running through our blood because it's, it's always been taught from generation to generation for thousands of years. It's something that we don't want to let go of. We're doing our part here, but you know, what if the rest of the world don't care? They look at it as it's just a bird, but we look at it as our way of life. I believe that if you take care of a bird or animal, it'll, it'll take care of you back or something, you know, something in return. But I think that's true. And that's being in harmony. <laughs> 